What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben, your host. So today, finally after about three weeks since the last update when it comes to macOS 15.3, you can see here we do have a software update that's available. Give it a few seconds to show up as it checks for an update and you can see right there, macOS Sequoia 15.3, this is developer beta 2. The public beta usually comes out the next day and you can see for me on my M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro this update comes in at exactly 2.09 gigs and I was updating from macOS 15.3 beta 1 and at the same time this is not all that Apple released you can see on the Apple developer page we got iOS and iPadOS 18.3 beta 2 we have macOS 15.3 beta 2 tvOS 18.3 beta 2 and visionOS 2.3 beta 2 alongside watchOS 11.3 beta 2 an iOS version was also released yesterday, but for some reason, Apple forgot to release the corresponding macOS version. You can see yesterday there was iOS 18.2.1, but there is no macOS 15.2.1 yet. Seems like they just forgot to hit publish. But for now, let me quickly update my Mac to the latest macOS 15.3 developer beta 2, and then we're gonna look at the OS and see what has changed. Just like that, my device is now up to date. If we go into the system preferences right here and then go to storage you can see when it comes to mac os the storage is taken up is 22.15 gigs and if we click on the more info tab right there you can see the new build number that we have with this update it's 24d5040 f and this ends with an f and in terms of stability it does tell us that we can expect another beta to be released we talk about when a possible beta 3 is going to be released for this update and when it comes to apple intelligence it's taking up 5.5 gigs which is exactly the same as what it was taking up on the previous update despite this being a small update it does correspond with something cool especially if you're a person that uses safari because safari was released 22 years ago today and if we open up safari and go to the about safari the build number was updated so the version if you are on the previous Mac OS 15.2 you have Safari version 18.2 and then if you start testing the betas of Mac OS 15.3 beta 1 going forward the version of Safari you're going to have is version 18.3 and the build number that we have right here you can see is 20620.2.3 Three, and that has been updated from 20620.2.2 so only the last number has been incremented by one and that has to do with some bug fixes that Apple hasn't yet disclosed one of the changes I was hoping macOS 15.3 beta 2 would bring that hasn't yet been brought forward has to do with the mail app so we still don't have the categories or some sort of settings and even in the help section before you could search on the category sections and you'd be able to see something but with this update that has been removed in fact even with the previous beta that wasn't in the code so it seems like categories might not be coming after all with mac os 15.3 something else that's good especially for users such as accountants and others that rely on the mac os calculator you can see before you had no option to continuously see incremental results and after i updated if i open up the calculator app right here i'll just press function control center just to center it and then i'll clear everything and now if i go to five plus five for example and then click equals you can see the more i click equals the more it increments the results by five you can do this for even percentages for example and then you'll be able to see the various results that you can get in if you're trying to make a budget to balance something the incremental function functions are here within the calculator app. It had been about three weeks since the previous Mac OS 15.2 beta 1 update so that means I had more than enough time to test it and one of the issues I was experiencing was in iMovie and Final Cut Pro especially Final Cut Pro the bugs seem to be more prominent where it wouldn't be able to find the source or location memory location of the different files that I was importing into it but at least when I tried to edit after updating to this 
it seems to have fixed that but it's not yet definitive if the issue is completely resolved or if it does come back then i'll let you know in a future update a bug that i've been experiencing not just on this version only but even on the previous version has to do with airdrop so i can airdrop files from my mac to my iphones but from my iphones to this mac especially this to be specific just this one that's on mac os 15.3 it doesn't seem to do or allow the airdrop files to go to the Mac. So I have in the meantime to use image capture or other means to transfer files. So hopefully Apple fixes that issue soon. A good feature that Mac OS 15.3 actually brings over to the Mac natively, which was already there with the previous version of iOS has to do with Gen emojis right here. So you can see now we can create Gen emojis customly just from the mac right there i searched for an egg wearing shoes and you can see it's trying to create a gen emoji from some of the text that i've input right there and it says some descriptions may create unexpected results i don't know if it's just me or if it's a bug in the os at least with this update it seems to be taking longer to create gen emojis and of course there were some that are already created that you can see when you go to the emoji tab right there like for example an egg wearing glasses this is one that i created that you can see right there but for users and it's, it has to do with those that are in regions that recently received apple intelligence features after the united states so those users are those that are in these regions and those are australia canada ireland new zealand south africa uk and us had it first and you had to change your region to that and in case you're wondering when apple intelligence is going to be increased to other regions and languages you can see apple intelligence languages are going to be supported in 2025 these ones include chinese english india singapore French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, Spanish, and Vietnamese. And those are coming in 2025, which is the year we are already in. So that's just something to update you on. One of the things that I'm hoping Apple does when it comes to Apple intelligence and trying to improve it, I'm hoping hopefully they make it something that looks like this. This is how the Grammarly interface looks and the pop-up looks. It will be cool to have it just pop up and then give you suggestions of things that you can fix without you having to like right click and then go to where it says uh, writing tools right there and then going to proofread or rewrite. If it can give you results on the go, just like this that will be something that's amazing and hopefully apple makes that change for mac os when it comes to the release notes of this update you can see here on the apple developer page right here it actually doesn't tell us much it says that there's a resolved issue with swift ui and that's just about what they say when it comes to mac os 15.3 beta 2 and you can see when it came to 15.2 we had a bunch of release notes that you know apple talked about but at least for this update apple doesn't tell us much hopefully this changes and they it begin to disclose what these updates include but that's just about it when it comes to this update and how it has been for me on my m1 pro macbook pro in terms of when we could see the next update you can see today being january the 7th 2025 new year um we are most likely on a weekly release cycle so that would mean the next update might be coming out on monday january the 13th if we don't see it on the 13th maybe it could be anywhere between the 13th to the 15th it's possible but then if we are not yet on the weekly release cycle then we are looking at the week of the 20th right there but most likely it's going to be next week on the 13th but other than that that's about it for me that's how this update has been for me when it comes to my macbook pro um just updated to it recently and i tried to run geekbench 5 but yeah geekbench 5 brings this error screen so for performance wise maybe i'll have to upgrade this to geekbench 6 and pay the subscription but and then after that i'll be able to test the battery life and other issues that this update has and maybe i'll do a follow-up video or maybe it's it's going to be something that i implement in some of my videos going forward since some of you want to see that now that's about it for me let me know what you think about this video if you liked it leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video